Welcome to Anthronauts, I'm Mark Thomas. If you have yet to do so, please subscribe and like below to join our network. In our last traveling competition, we learned about Belize's Lamanite temples and Senegal's House of Slaves on Gore Island. Now in our final battle between these two cultures, it's time to meet the people. In previous episodes, we learned that most of the people you meet in Senegal are Wolof. Fortunately, I have a friend who helped me negotiate and communicate with this community during my travels here. So I recommend that you do the same unless you are fluent in the Wolof and French languages. When I arrived at the airport, I felt like I entered a beehive when getting a taxi to the hotel. It was nice having a local to help me through that and similar situations. Overall, the Senegalese people are very nice and sociable. They are curious about where you are from and what your life is like back home. The difficult part is the country's poverty, which they suffer through on a daily basis. As a result, salespeople may be quite aggressive not taking your first no for an answer. But realize that you are very rich in comparison and that they are just trying to make a living, so please bargain with compassion. Senegal surrounds the Gambia, Africa's smallest country where they also speak the Wolof language. As a result, visitors often refer to this region as Senegambia. Many powers have ruled here, including the Ghana, Tukuru, and Mali empires. The most recent opportunists came in the 14th century from Europe, especially Portugal, Spain, England, and France, from where they established the transatlantic slave trade distributing products, commodities, and slaves to Europe and the Americas. Enter British pirates known as the Baymen, targeting a Central American area to be named the British Honduras, which we now call Belize. Spain allowed them to log mahogany forests in the northern Mayan area off the New River. They sent this timber to Europe for valuable furniture production. This led to both conflict and interaction among the locals, producing a mixed race population including the Creoles and Garifuna. The concept Belizean Creole refers more to their culture rather than a specific ethnic mix because the people you meet here form a rainbow of complexions inherited from the Mayan, European, and African ancestors. As we discussed in our language episode, their language is also called Creole, but it's spelled with a K. When I was there, I used the few Creole words that I knew, but fortunately for me, the official language in Belize is English. So uh, I was able to comfortably chat with most people there. Belize also has a strong African connection through the Garifuna. They are primarily a mix between West Africans and Arawak Native Americans, and their predecessors were brought into the Caribbean slave trade. They speak the Garifuna dialect of the Arawakan language. One of their most popular exports is Punta music, an energetic dance art form, and I will post a link for you at anthronauts.com. Overall, the Belizean people are very sociable, like in Senegal, but this is also a very poor country, so I would suggest that you do most of your adventures during the daytime. However, life is pretty chill on their nearby islands, so after a couple of days in Belize City, I spent the balance of my time on Key Calker, relaxing by the Caribbean Sea while making new friends. In addition, you may also canoe, scuba dive, or fish the warm waters for a very relaxing vacation. So, the time has come to choose a champion to go on to the next battle. Is it our current champ Senegal or our challenger Belize? Leave your comments below and also remember to like this video and then vote at anthronauts.com. I will announce the winner in our next episode. Thanks to Jared Jeff, I'm Mark Thomas for Anthronauts.